situation. You have an eroded, shallow topsoil, which is going to be droughty, hillside forest pasture that is presently unproductive with a lot of weeds. This is the people that are not here today. <laughs> <laughs> So you plan to renovate and receive. That's the situation. Here's the question. What grass did you select to plant on this hillside, and why did you choose that particular grass? That's what I'm here to learn. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she's here to learn. <laughs> okay, before, you know, what's, what's typically the grass species that's preferred within the horse industry. Orchard. Orchard grass. Most of the horse people that uh, you know I talk to, the call fescues and asking for it. Okay, wrong one. No, but no, hang hang on to that. Okay. They, uh, but with you know what I see within the horse industry, orchard grass is the preferred grass species or uh, you know, horse station. Why? You know, it's very palatable. Um, they uh, much more palatable than, uh, you know, tall fescue, particularly, uh, you know, if they have a choice. But they, uh, if you look at what's the most important factor to be considered in selecting appropriate plant species to be seeded on any given field, you know, as individuals, we tend to have a preference, generally orchard grass. But what really should we be looking at in making the decision of what should be planted? What grows best? You know, the uh, the soil. So, uh, you know, if we look at the things that uh, you know, we need, it's it. soil and site characteristics are the primary thing. The first thing we need to look at. So, uh, what's involved with soil and site characteristics? We look at soil type and soil suitability. What's the depth of the soil? Is it a deep, loamy soil? Is it a shallow, droughty soil? What's you know, the drainage? Is it wet? Um, what's the soil fertility? You know, grasses differ in their fertility requirements. Fescue is adapted to lower pH, lower fertility soils. That is tall fescue. So fertility you know, is going to enter the picture. Soil topography, you know, is it an eroded hillside? It's at the bottom of the hill where the soil that was on the hillside you know, has, has ended up. So these are all considerations we need to uh, keep in mind in selecting what we're going to plant on the pasture. So these factors determine what you can grow on that particular field. So you choose your species based on the species adaptation to the site. That's primary. A little bit later we're going to uh, give a look at a table or a chart that will help you in uh, you know, determining what should be planted. We also need to look at the species response to cutting or grazing. You know, we're talking about pastures or grazing. You know, some grasses are much better suited to closer grazing than others. You know, bluegrass will withstand much closer grazing than orchard grass. Fescue will withstand closer grazing than orchard grass. So, you know, you need to look at what's your management. Uh, you know, are, are you in a rotational grazing system or are you continuously grazing? For each yield and a seasonal distribution of growth. You know, the more pasture that we can grow throughout the, uh, the growing season or extending the growing season, the less hay we have to feed. So, and actually in this area, one of the things you'll look at this afternoon is most years, particularly a winter like last year, if we had enough tall fescue pasture, we could have grazed all winter long because we had no snow. And it was warm enough that fescue grew some days, even in January. So uh, you know, we look at not only yield, but the distribution of growth. Palatability and nutritional value, that's a big thing with uh, you know, horse owners, palatability. And uh, so certainly uh, it's something to be considered. And then the one that I think is becoming more and more important, um, and then you know, we're going to come back to this, but uh, you know, persistence. 
How long is what you plant going to last? If we look at orchard grass adaptation, orchard grass is best adapted to a medium textured, uh, moderately well grained to well grained soil. It will not tolerate wet areas as well as tall fescue or reed canary grass. And I'm going to, you're going to see reed canary grass up here right now a number of times. For pasture purposes, I generally do not recommend reed canary grass because it is not well suited to frequent grazing or cutting. So you're going to see it because of where it's adapted, but in most cases, we're not going to use it for pasture purposes. I use it for a variety of hay purposes. But the key thing is, orchard grass is best, best adapted to medium texture, moderately well grain, to well grain soils. It is less drought tolerant than tall fescue, reed, and airy grass, or smooth grown grass. Persistence may be a problem on the south slopes having droughty, shallow soils. So uh, it's not going to uh, you know, do as well on a droughty site or that eroded hillside. It's just not going to uh, persist. It is less heat tolerant than tall fescue, which would be grown grass. If fertility is allowed to drop, or stands are grazed hard. Most horse pastures are grazed hard. It's particularly during the summer. Stand life would generally not exceed two to four years. We have uh, hay growers in southern Maryland who are losing orchard grass stands within a year of planting. So, uh, you know, orchard grass, uh, you know, for what, what I see, it's not my preferred grass species, you know, at this uh, point. If we look at the species ranking uh, and their adaptation to poorly drained soil conditions, the reed canary grass is best adapted, typically tall fescue, smooth grown grass, perennial rye grass, orchard grass. Of all these grasses, it is least adapted to poorly drained soils. And one of the things I've seen with hay growers is, uh, you know, the problems that they have had with timothy over the years and a mite that affects timothy and they have switched to trying to grow orchard grass on timothy ground and it doesn't work orchard grass has very specific requirements it is going to be persistent what i see with hay growers is they're trying to grow orchard grass on timothy ground and it's not working if we look at species ranking uh, to excessively grain soil conditions Reed canary grass, tall fescue, orchard grass in this case in the middle. If we look at it for low soil pH, fescue, reed canary grass, timothy, orchard grass, it's somewhat above the middle. So, you know, not well suited to uh, low pH uh, conditions. Where overwintering of the grass is concerned, under intensive, but uh, you know, managed reed canary grass, timothy, tall fescue, smooth grown, orchard grass, grain. So, again, it's not well suited to intensive management, particularly where uh, you know, it's going to be intensively used, and then we may have you know, cold winter conditions. That intensive management and, uh, and cold weather uh, you know, doesn't uh, favor uh, you know, orchard grass. So these are some things to keep in mind in terms of you know, selecting your uh, species for uh, what's suited to your, uh, your soils and sites. This is a table that I referred to and uh, this is in the handout. The, the next three slides are, uh, you know, it's all one uh, you know, table. But if we look at the very first thing that needs to be considered is what is the drainage. So if you look at, let's say you have a poorly drained soil. And you know, what would be suited for poorly drained soil would be called fescue, either endophyte infected or the endophyte free or perennial rye grass. One change, if you want to make one note at this point, the, uh, the table that uh, is in the, uh, the handout, the last one in the white section, actually has orchard grass being suited to uh, somewhat poorly grain soil often in the bluegrass. I would change that and make orchard grass moderately well grain. The, uh, uh, I made the change, uh, you know, on the slide, but uh, I've got to go through some other uh, channels to get it changed. Uh, this publication came off of uh, our website. But the first thing to look at is say orchard grass should be moderately well drained rather than somewhat poorly drained. So uh, the first thing you look at is drainage, then you look at 
assembly and pH. Again, you know, if we look at uh, you know, poorly grained uh, tall fescue, it's suited to moderate uh, you know, fertility pH range. That's a very wide pH range. Basically, the widest pH range you know, of all the grasses. If you look at orchard grass, fertility requirement basically uh, you know, the same the pH range is now. Then you can go on, once you've made uh, you know, your choice based on drainage and fertility, you can look at other characteristics, seeding bigger, winter hardiness, uh, drought tolerance, palatability. And then finally, uh, what type of growth habit? It was a bunch of grass, open sod, or uh, you know, it was a you know, sod form. Bluegrass, smooth uh, grown grass are both uh, you know, slide grass. Again, you know, for this area, we're really out of uh, smooth grown or, yeah, smooth grown grass uh, you know, territory. So that's a table that you can go to. You know what your soil type is. If you do not have a soil map of your farm, you know, whether it's a two acre farm or a two hundred acre farm, you need a soil map to know what soils you have and where. Um, you know, if you have ten acres. You may have three or four different soil types. You need to know where they are. Basically, if you want to grow orchard grass, you need to put it on the best soil. Because it's not going to survive on the poor soil. So you need to know where they are. And um, you know, if you don't have it, go see your, uh, your local uh, soil conservation uh, district office and you know, get the map and the uh, soil description. 